My name is Howard Bell and I'm the, the co-owner of, of Litre 8, which I've had new since 1976 when I bought it from Dustings of Burwood as a off-the-shelf SLR 5000. In those intervening 45 years, it's gone through a lot of evolution and revolution. And I came up here today at Winton for a test and tune. And the only argument I was given against buying this car was that red cars are involved in more accidents. So I thought, well that means diddly squat. Originally as an SLR 5000, which is a 308 cubic inch engine, when I first got rid of the 308 I went to the Turbo 6. There was limited kits, pretty much found upon if you took out a V8 and replaced it with a Turbo 6, you're immediately you know, labelled as some sort of crazy person. So you know, after 10 years, you know, not due to the constant heckling, I just decided let's do something different. And I went down and bought an LS7, and uh, that was an iron block. So I'm getting it put together by Nancurvis boats, performance boats in Epilock. And they looked at it and said, you know, a lot of weight there, you'd probably be better off with an aluminium block to save weight. And I thought, gee, that's a good idea. Not just a 454, we said, well, while we're here, you know, at that time, the 8-litre class, or 478 cubic inches, was a very popular boat racing engine. So they suggested, why don't you do an 8-litre? And I said, what could possibly go wrong with that? These guys build a boat you can put out on a river and hold it flat with a supercharger for an hour plus. That's what I'm looking for. And I was sort of thinking, so how can I make the car subtle that it's not a 5000 anymore? I thought, gee, I could just change the 5 to an 8 maybe. And I found a small panel shop and I took the two doors and the boot spoiler and said, can you do this? And voila. I wanted it to look fairly much, you could walk past and think, oh, it's a nice 5000 until you either pop the bonnet or you have a close look at the number plate or the stencils. And then you think, moment please. <laughs> Something is different here. A 9.24 litre engine, that makes perfect sense. I remember in one of the early Summer Nats seminars, they had Mike from NOS giving a lecture. And he said at the time, my ideal car would have a 10 litre engine. So I thought, well, if it's good enough for him, I can get close to that. <laughs> The original intention was they're going to get it street registered. Then I took it to some engineers, and this was with the aluminium block and the weight. They sort of wanted the engine moved back four inches. They wanted extra steel plating on the lower wishbones, and they're like almost four mil thick now. And I thought, geez, this guy's, these guys are crazy. So we found another engineer, this old guy down Geelong, and he was a lot more, because he came and had a look and said, oh, what truck did you get that front end out of? So I said, I think you're on a winner here. Until he said, yeah, before I pass these cars, I bring them down and I've got this windy road outside of Geelong and when it's wet, I take it out there and test them. And I said, this is never going to happen. You know? So at that stage it said, you know, road car, toy, tick. <laughs> and that's what it became. I rocked up to the Summer Nats on the 91-92 time frame. Got there without paperwork, was back in the motel, and the guy opened the bonnet and said, just come inside. So I didn't even think about winning anything, so I was still out on the oval in the paddock, and I was giving out awards, and someone said, hey, you just won an award. And he says, oh, oh, have I? So I went up to the office, and I think it was Phil Scott at the time. So he was up there, and he sort of gave me the trophy and stuff, and said, look, we'll organise tomorrow to meet a photographer and we'll take you out to a quarry somewhere near um, the Summer Nats and you'll take some photos. So, you know, we did some thrill-seeking photos. I was driving on this two-lane road. My wife was driving his four-wheel drive while he was hanging out the passenger window taking photos, but it all ended well. Under the bonnet at present, it's the 564 cubic inch block, 
Same block as I had with Leader A that's just had a mild 30 thou overbore, but we're now running a stroker crank with the mandated longer con rods and higher piston pin heights, etc. It's putting out of the back wheels about 705 horsepower at 6700 RPM and given the generally accepted factors of about 26% drivetrain losses, that's about 886 horsepower at the flywheel and about 866 foot-pounds of torque and the torque's coming in about 4400 RPM so it's no need to really rev it out, it's a five-speed box, it's close ratio it just works fine, just go click, click, click from one to the other. Especially now in street machine, you read guys, it's like, yeah, I'm running a 632 now, or I'm running this, and like you're thinking, yeah, and I know you can buy off the shelf like 700 plus, you know, Mike Coleman, those sort of guys doing these monster packages. So, you know, the window just keeps moving out. And the proliferation of turbos now, LS engines, well, I should say the pretend LS, the real LS engine series was the big blocks, you know, LS3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why they reuse that bond clemencher for that, I don't know. It's a mystery, but every man his dogs, basically. As a kid, I had some old car and driver magazines from the US about Miles Johnson and, and those sort of guys and old Chevy brochures, you know, the Chevelle SS that were sort of tied down with the big ropes and stakes and that sort of stuff. So that sort of started me thinking, but I was never a real big into the car one. I got into street machine as a transition from van wheels. I've got the sort of the last van where it was the Co-1 and I've basically, to my knowledge, I got every copy since. As an ego point of view, whenever my car was there or mentioned, I kept a separate copy in plastic, so they're the ones never to be read. You know? <laughs> if someone had said, you know, at that first summit, at, you know, you're still going to be talking about this car in, in 2021, I'd have said, what are you smoking, fella? You know, like it, it wasn't, it didn't even enter my mind. Facebook, for example, I mean, people keep throwing up photos, tagging me in magazine covers and this and that. And then everyone starts, oh, I love, love, love. So, geez, there's still a lot of affection for the car still.